Child, there were already reports not so long ago that Kim Porter's family was seeking legal advice and was in pursuit of hitting Diddy with a lawsuit for wrongful death because they had physical evidence to support their case. And while we were not sure at the time who the family members were, now word on the street is that Quincy Brown may have been part of the people who wanted the case reopened. Allegedly. Baby, does that mean that he has been plotting on Diddy all along? That he was only waiting for the right time to start whistleblowing on what really happened to his mother? And of course, I had to celebrate with my beautiful mother. Yes, yes. The finale was amazing. Finale. Thank you for having me. Apparently, Quincy isn't the only one with things he needs to get off his chest. Even his dad, Al B. Shore, has promised one hell of an expose in the form of a freaking documentary. We are going to be producing the Al B. Shore life story. <laughs> so hold on to you. Hold on to your britches, and you'll really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really gonna need to call Homeland Security. OMG, it's getting juicy. Okay guys, by now I think we have already established that Kim Porter's death was not because of pneumonia, right? There have been too many unanswered questions that prove that she did not just die of natural causes. For instance, the deputy coroner, Ed Winter, who first handled the case, died literally just a few months ago. The same coroner who found a suspicious toxin when he was trying to figure out what happened to Kim Porter. At the time, Ed Winter said that the situation needed to be investigated further, but he was replaced by another coroner. And it took a long time for the second coroner to conclude that Kim had passed away because of pneumonia. Reportedly, Kim was also trying to get in touch with her primary doctor in the weeks leading up to her death because she felt like something was wrong. But unfortunately, she couldn't get in touch with her doctor. She allegedly found it strange that the doctor didn't get back to her because she had never had a problem reaching the doctor before. Then Kim reportedly told Diddy that she couldn't reach her doctor and he referred her to to a different doctor. And her friends said Kim's initial doctor had no idea she was trying to reach him. Oh, it gets even better, guys. Y'all remember when Diddy said that Kim sent the twins to him because she didn't want them to catch the flu she had? He specifically said in an interview, three days before she passed, she wasn't feeling well. She had the flu and she sent the kids over to my house so they wouldn't get sick. One night I was checking on her and she was like, Puffy, take care of my babies. She actually said that to me before she died. Well, according to reliable sources, the twins told two of Kim's friends that they were already scheduled to go to their father's house. And it was just a coincidence that their mom fell sick at the time. So why would Diddy lie about his own children going to see him? Now, naturally, Kim's children, Quincy and the twins have been reading the reports and they have obviously seen everything that has been said about their mom. And with everything being exposed about Diddy, allegedly they also want an inquiry to be done about what really happened to Kim. But if you've been keen like me, you know that they have asked questions before, especially the twins. So for those who may have missed this tea, a nanny identified only as Jane Doe filed a wrongful termination lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him of terminating her employment after she informed him she was pregnant. She also claimed that she was told by Diddy's reps that she was let go because she set a bad example for his daughters by being pregnant and unmarried. The irony. But according to the nanny, Diddy terminated her contract because she was getting too close to the twins and they started telling her things about their mother. The nanny said a lot of details didn't add up and she even recommended that the twins see a specialist. I don't know if the nanny was being malicious and just trying to have a big payday, but I do know that if it was just about Diddy terminating her job because she got pregnant, she would not need to file a lawsuit as a Jane Doe. The only reason why she filed as a Jane Doe was because she was too scared to be identified, probably because she knows exactly what happens to people who try to expose Diddy. Now here's the thing, if the twins were talking to their nanny and questioning what happened to their mom, can you imagine the kind of conversation they had with their brother Quincy? And this lawsuit by the nanny was filed months ago, which means that they have been having this conversation long before Diddy's lawsuit. Well, it's possible that they were too scared to say anything back then. But now with everyone telling the truth, maybe Quincy and the twins feel like now was a safe time to expose Diddy and how he really treated their mom. You know, I get why they would be scared because other than the DV they possibly witnessed, Diddy reportedly kept Kim's children from having a relationship with the family in Georgia and isolated them from any communication. 
situation, and it's almost as if the family doesn't exist. And he wasn't just keeping Kim's kids from her family, by the way. Reportedly, even when Kim was alive, Diddy tried to take her kids, but she threatened to expose him if he ever dared to keep her kids away from her. In addition, there have also been reports that Kim's children tried to reach out to a few of Kim's friends earlier, but they were all scared of what Diddy would do if they went public with their concerns. Well, now they apparently feel much safer because the ball is already rolling on Diddy and there's nothing he can do to stop it. And allegedly, when it comes to Quincy, he has every intention of working with his biological dad, Al B. Shore, to expose what really happened to Kim and the real reason why Al B. stayed out of his life. Y'all remember after Diddy's houses were raided, Al B. told Quincy to come home when he captioned a photo with Quincy, hashtag letter to my son, come home. The door is wide open. You're safe here, son. I love you, pops. You're biological. Well, at first, fans were a bit skeptical about Al B. Shore's intentions, especially since Quincy previously wrote an open letter scolding Al B. for not being in his life growing up, and even questioned the importance of a biological relationship. Part of his open letter read, as far as my biological father goes, the spitting image is all I have taken from him. Throughout my life, I've always wondered about him, where he was, what was he doing, and most importantly, was he even thinking about me? The absence of my father has given me a better understanding of what type of man I am going to be. I am grateful for my mom's love, support, guidance, and for her strength. But now people apparently understand why things unfolded the way they did. There were sources that said that Diddy kept Al B. Shore away from Quincy and made Kim cut contact with him, even cutting off access to their son. And to a lot of people, it's starting to sound more believable given the allegations that have been coming out recently. Well, Al B. Shore has been doing more than just asking his son to go back home because he spoke at the Equal Justice Now Awards in Los Angeles and promoted his forthcoming documentary, implying that Diddy had everything to do with his coma. We are going to be producing the Al B. Shore Life Story. So hold on to your, hold on to your britches, and you'll really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. <laughs> I mean, the Homeland Security reference obviously signaled that he was talking about Diddy, as the organization raided his Los Angeles and Miami homes just days before Al B. Shore's speech. Personally, I am not surprised that Quincy's father is ready to spill on what happened to Kim, because he suggested a few times in the past that Diddy had the mother of his son unalived. For instance, there was a time Al remembered the moment he found out Kim had been pronounced dead by writing. I just found this footage from the morning I learned of at Lady KP's, aka hashtag Kim importers unaliving and how it ripped the soul from my physical body. I do know very clearly that hashtag Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some BS. Really? This is where I get in trouble. Alby actually tagged Diddy in the post to make sure Diddy saw how he thinks he was responsible, adding, we just celebrated our son at Quincy's New Deal and Christmas special with at Netflix and she was in fantastic health as well as laughing seeing me and at Diddy's mutual exchange at the theater. I'm going to leave it here. Anyway, with Al B. now talking about releasing a documentary, I know that he's got a lot to say about what happened to Kim. And if he's really working on it with Quincy, this might be the end of Diddy as we know it. I mean, if there's one person who probably saw how Diddy really treated Kim, it was Quincy. And if there's one person people will 100% believe is Quincy. Baby, I am dying to know Quincy's POV. But meanwhile, let me know what you think. Do you believe he's actually been plotting his mom's revenge all these years? Drop those thoughts in the comments section below.